you, Father, even now, oh God, for the liberty that we have found in Christ, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins, oh God. We thank you that they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, oh God. And because of your grace, because of your love for us, we have a home in heaven, oh God. And we lift up the name of Christ this morning, oh Father. And we enter in this morning before a throne of grace, oh God. We thanksgiving in our hearts, oh Father, and the song of praise upon our lips, Father. And we want to worship you, oh God, with every fiber of our being and with everything that was within us in spirit and in truth to Christ our Lord and God's people say amen and amen hallelujah come on let's bless the Lord hallelujah hallelujah let's give him a big shout of praise today hallelujah let all the earth rejoice Are you a friend of God today?
on, Highland. Let's lift up our voices. Wherever you are today, lift up your voice. Sing to the Lord. Make melody in your heart today. Say, I am a friend of God. Say, I am a friend of God. Say, I am a friend of God. Say, I. You call me friend. You call me friend. Come on, choir. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. Come on, saints. I am a friend of God. Everybody. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Say it one more time. Say it. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Hallelujah. You call me friend. Amen, amen. God bless you. Welcome once again. Take just a moment right now to bless someone, encourage somebody, greet somebody in Jesus' name. And if you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to know that today is a wonderful day to worship the Lord. We are so glad you've joined us today by the internet. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you.
bless the Lord. And I am free to live for you. Say, I am free. Yes, I am free. say if it looks like you've got the victory. I said if you know you've got the victory. Sometimes those clouds can be hanging over our heads, but we need to know that the sun is up above them. Amen. Gracious and relentless. How gracious, relentless is the Father's love towards us. Breathtaking the beauty and the radiance of you.
let's sing. We exalt thee. exalt you of a father of a God in the name of Jesus you are highly exalted and worshiped and Lord you are worthy of all this worship and praise and thanksgiving even as we gather together this morning to say Lord that you mean so much to us everyone here has a song a testimony of your goodness and and lord we can say the lord is good his mercy endureth forever so we have come in oh god from so many different backgrounds and languages and so many nations to come to say there is no one but you and you are worthy of all the praise and glory and honor be exalted in our midst be you praised and worshiped oh god this morning, Lord, I just pray for precious ones here and those that are watching. And Lord, you know every heart, you know every situation. Lord, there are pain and hurt and there are lack and, oh God, those need to be opened and there needs, oh God, healing where the spirit, soul, body. And we speak grace and peace. And as your Holy Spirit ministers to your people, touch them even this morning. And Lord, that people will be loosed, oh God, from every bondage and from every curse and from every situation that the enemy would bring upon them. And Father, open the doors, we pray. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to pray for all the graduates of the class of 2017. And we pray for them and for the many teachers. And even, oh God, as they would be embarking on vacation, give them grace and help. And we pray for your church. Even as we pray, even for this house and the building and the people of God, what a great God. Thank you for your goodness and grace and mercy. Now, Lord, to you be praise and glory as we lift people. Go ahead, people. Lift up those dear ones. Lift up your personal needs. Someone needs salvation. Someone needs healing. Someone needs deliverance. Someone needs God's grace extended to them. Go ahead and, and lift up those needs to the Father in the name of Jesus. And Lord, with these hands, even as we lift you up and as we lift up our hands in surrender, we lift our hands, uh, bringing needs and people to you. Thank you for lifting up those burdens. Thank you, God, because it's lifted at the cross and we can praise you. Our prayers and our worship is towards you. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen and amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. We're going to have the choir sing the first song, but please remember that uh, what a wonderful event we had on Friday, despite the, you know, all of the uh, uh, things about the rain. It stopped just before and just began after we finished the program. Thank you, everyone, that made it a wonderful success. And for all those that have been there, for uh, Sister Sherry and for uh, 
uh, Minister Emanuel and so many others in many departments that, that brought food and helped and cooked and so forth and the many of you that came in. Please remember, don't miss these occasions. Do keep in mind that July the 29th is the big event that is going to take place at the Holiday Hill in Connecticut. You can register, the bus takes you and brings you and takes you, and also all the food you can eat and a wonderful opportunity. Just keep that in mind. And remember, reception, you can go down and check those uh, tickets. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Look at the person next to you and tell them, God will fight for you. Say, he is your mighty man of war. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do mighty man of war lion of judah we bow down and worship you yahweh yahweh come and do what only you Lift up those hands in this place.
this morning to testify of God's grace and goodness and mercy we come here to testify of all that God has done and we can say come and do what only only you can do Lord how many can testify of God's greatness and goodness in your life what only he could do no one else can do that he has done it and we come here to say thank you Lord thank you Lord I want to continue on the subject of liberty. But this morning, my subject is proclaiming liberty. And I take this from the book of Isaiah, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And if you turn to what Jesus quoted, his manifesto, his first preaching, and what were the words that he said, you find that in chapter 4 of the book of Luke and verse 18. Listen to what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. What an awesome aspect of this Bible we have that God tells us proclaim liberty. Remember the song, I got a bell, I'll ring it in the morning, I'll ring it in the evening. I'll ring out a warning. I'll ring out that men should love one another. We have a bell. Not simply the liberty bell that is in Pennsylvania, but a liberty bell that we have. The freedom that God has given to us because of what Jesus Christ has done. I have just four points this morning. The first has to do with what I call Satan closes the door of his prison. Satan loves to close the doors of prisoners. And like the Pied Piper of Hamlin, he goes out blowing his beautiful music and gathering, as it were, those like children led to and fro with every wind of doctrine and into a place finally they vanish into thin air. He loves not to open the doors of his prison. If you were to turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 14, listen to what it says in verse 12, specifically addressing Lucifer. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? And verse 13 goes on to say, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. I will sit upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And listen to what God says in verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Verse 16. That they that see thee shall not only look upon thee. And listen to what it says in verse 17. You that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that open not the house of his prisoners. This is what Satan delights. He has a key and he's locked his prisoners and he has no delight in opening the doors of his prison. His prisoners led up with the pipe Piper's music of merriment and liberty and freedom as they shout out and burn the vehicles and go about saying we are free and liberated to do what we want. Are blind. They're chained. And in spite of what they call the intellectual that God has given and the wisdom that our God has given, have turned it into darkness. And the truth that should have known have been tarnished instead of worshiping the creator as Romans chapter 1 says they began to worship the creation here is the pipe papa Satan himself that has made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof across the world he causes men to hate brother against brothers nations against nations class against class culture and color against cultures and colors and people against one another and laid the city's waste thereof and he opens not the prison he will shut this prison and will not open the house of his prisoners they're locked in they're chained in i want us to know that this is what satan does he does not give you advance warning to say this is dangerous. This bottle is dangerous. These pills are dangerous. This influence is dangerous. What you see and enjoy is dangerous. That could send you up to a pernicious destruction. And while you laugh all the way and dance all the way, and when you shout of freedom, you are going into a miserable place, shut up in darkness into a dungeon that has no windows no no doors and he is locked the key, he has locked the door how then shall we escape for satan has a mastery he's bound people and put them down and i say to you there's no joy there's no laughter there's no fun when they die they go to an eternity of darkness without god and it is not God that sent them to hell. Hell is made for the devil and his demons. Hell was never made for man. But man of his own volition, of his own choice, have chosen to take this path, following this wicked pipe piper, dancing all the way to the broad road of destruction. How then shall we escape? What then shall we do? Let me remind you before we go to that. What he has done is not only chained people into darkness and thrown away the keys. But here is the pipe piper of the enemy of our soul. That has brought them into a pit. And there's no liberty. There's no merriment. In other words, total complete subjugation. Slavish totally under his dominion, gnarling, weeping. And the Bible says, where there is no exit. It is a captivity 
that is far more dangerous. We see that captivity today, how many people are lured into wickedness and filth, even if it were just mine a little bottle of pills. It could be just a wreath. It could be just a bottle of alcohol. It could be unforgiveness, selfishness, pride. It could be generational curse. It could be all sorts of wickedness. It, I say to you what the Bible says, bringing our thoughts in the captivity of Satan that only through Jesus we can pull down the citadels of Satan. But first let me say we are captured and the first thing that he does is blind our hearts, our minds, the eyes of our understanding. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, He has blinded, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the people of this world. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus, who is the image of God, should shine into them and give them light. What I mean is, my friend, there is what you call a sense of captivity of the spirit where the light the light of god the light of man the spirit is dead down right dead it is smoked out where the soul and the emotion where the intellectualism everything to do with the soul has totally been darkened that was not how we were created where there is a captivity of our own spirit soul emotions our relationship everything that he has not that so much so we have been decimated decapacitated and totally dismantled that we have no idea who we are in christ who god made us that we have such poor image and such a rotten picture of ourselves but then also there's the captivity of our body and you can see that slave trade you can see that sex trade you can see children being kidnapped and women being kidnapped you can read about it in nigeria about this outfit of uh, misfits capturing children and selling them as isis has been doing the tragedy is there's a ransom and when you look at what they do they are bringing into captivity people they are being subjugated into slavery and that's a sense of what you call captivity. You know, there is a captivity of the spirit and of the soul, and yes, of the body as well. Paul Henry, in the year 1775 of March 23rd, as he stood at Richmond Convention in Virginia, speaking to the leaders of the 13th colony, towards the conclusion of his speech, we all know the words where he said, give me liberty or give me death. What he meant was, I'd rather die than not be liberated. But think with me for a moment. He came from a British stock. He was not in chains. It was simply a matter of political it was simply a matter of social, it was simply a matter of intellectual, what you call capturing. He was beholden to the crown, and many of them come from the British stock, never in chains, and yet in a sense, a sense of what you call no taxation without representation. But they fought for the idea of liberty, independence, not to be ruled from a different king that had no, absolutely no connection with the people that were in the new country. And so give me liberty or give me death became the cry. And a year later on July the 4th, 1776, the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence put their pen onto that paper and signed it, literally signing their own death warrant. Think with me for a moment, the liberty that we have, how precious it is. And yet 75 years later, a great man, Frederick Douglass, was asked to speak on the 4th of July, 1852. Understand, he had purchased his own freedom, 
and then he had been to England and coming back and now he is upstate Rochester and been asked to speak to distinguished guests. You can read about his lectures. He talked about this day on the 4th of July, 1852, 75 years after independence. He said the 4th of July holds no significance to me and to my people. While you set up the lights, I'm paraphrasing this, while you enjoy freedom, my people are in chains. You all have never been in chains. The British has never put you in dungeons. We have no freedom, we have no right. We have to answer to the beck and call of those that are liberated. All of America doesn't have that freedom. That sounds and the voice of Frederick Douglass resonates even in 2017. I say to you today, while we celebrate liberty in the outer man, there are still people bound in many parts of the world. Only in the 60s were Saudis banned slavery. But right now, there are areas in the world like Sudan, where even from Khartoum, they would come to enslave the Nubians in South Sudan. There are people in Murashena and other places where slavery is not yet out. But what is so sad, even in our country, there's a sense of slavish mentality, where people are enslaved in their mind and in their heart, and where the sex slave is thriving industry, where children are kidnapped and women are sold for the pursuit of sex, that is slavery itself. Far greater is the slavish and the slavery, a captivity of our spirit, of our soul, our emotions, and of our mind, of our intellect. Satan delights to do that. While there are many people at the sound of my voice may be saved, but they are not liberated in their own soul and in their own spirit and their own emotion. Satan has bound them. And when we think in terms of the very many things of what he does, a sense of aggression, a sense of regression, a sense of repression, a sense of retroaggression, a sense of suppression, a sense of what you call oppression and obsession, a sense of what you call depression. All of this comes to that final finality called possession, where Satan takes control. He brings about so many dirt to bring down a man. In many respect, our own sin has made us indebted to this arch rival of our soul. We have sold ourselves to slavishness. And what he has done is enslaved us. That he's holding us ransom, but while doing so, we are locked up. And the Bible says, as we read in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 17, he has laid the great civilization wilderness and the cities of our world totally destroyed and he will not open the house of his prisoners. I say to you, what he wants is a total possession. And the tragic situation is people are so blind while thinking they are wise, they have made wisdom into foolishness, intellectual into such disquietness. And when you think that the gift of God has been ruined by selfishness, they are blinded by the gifts that God has given them, blinded by the blessing that God has given them. They'd rather worship the creation than worship the creator. So you come to a place when man thinks he is an ape and behaves like an ape when he is what the Bible called the apex of all his creation, made in the image of God, truly free. Free in the spirit, free in the soul, and free in the body. Emancipated and liberated, like God, a free moral agent. And look what has man been reduced to, reduced to by this arch devil, the enemy of our soul and spirit. So I say to you today, how then do we get out, number two, out of this closed 
prison where this prison guard is under orders from Lucifer himself, do not open the doors, shut the doors. He opens not the house of his prisoners. How then can we be set free? How then can we be set free out of our inferiority complex? Whether out of our own slavish thing to sin and death, to our own slavishness to a bottle, to a drug, to a wreath, or whatever, to our own slavishness when it comes to bringing our fellow brethren down. The Bible is a proclamation of liberty. I mean the liberty of the spirit and soul and body. The Bible tells us after giving the laws in chapter 20 of the book of Exodus in verse 22, from all the way, verse 12 to 13, we don't need to go there. Remember you are a stranger and treat those that are living among you with honorable. Let there be equity not only among yourselves, also among those that have come down to your place. The Bible talks about freedom and liberty. The Bible talks about in Amos chapter 4 and verse 6 to 8, how they have sold their brethren into slavery and God says for three strikes and yet for four, I'm going to punish you. The book of Psalm chapter 72, the entire chapter talks about what it is that people have been brought down. And this is what the devil will do to make people bring them down into slavery. In fact, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, the word of God is enshrined with these words. He had shown the old man what is good. And he talks about to be humble and to the, to the things that God has to love mercy and to do justly. This is the cry of the prophets a sense not only of spiritual justice, a sense of social justice that we should not be afraid to talk about. The ills of this world have been brought about by Satan, bringing this class division, color division, the prejudice within nations and cultures, even among Christians. It is evil in the sight of God, and no Christian should stand up and defend this sort of wickedness that Satan has done to perpetuate in the land across the world, even in our glorious land, while we enjoy that freedom and liberty. So I say to you, how then shall we get out of this? The first point in section two, how to get out of it, is to know the truth. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want you to understand even after the proclamation that President Abraham Lincoln issued, there were so many slaves had no understanding that they were free, free indeed, because those that owned them didn't want them to know. Satan plays this blind game. He wants us to be blinded. He wants us not to be able to know the truth. He wants to keep us ignorant. My friend, even the natural, many people come into deafness in finance because they make a sign and they sign up for something they're about to buy just across. You find the vendor, car vendor, who will make you sign for a price. And by the end of the day, you found out you signed literally your soul. Almost everything you have, they pick up and take it. This is bringing you into deprivation. Don't put your signature in anything, not even in your soul and spirit, and sell yourself cheap. Do not degrade yourself to what Satan wants you to be, like a dirt Yes, we have all come short of the glory of God, but I would tell you this, confess it, and know that God can change us. All things are passed away. How oh, behold, all things are become new. How then shall I know the truth? In chapter 8 of John and verse 36, it says, if the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. You are free indeed simply means what he has done is he set you free and he's paid the price, he's paid the ransom, and you are free indeed. But you need to know this truth. And I say 
It's so important. Listen to me carefully. When you read Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1, let's go line by line. It is the Spirit of the Lord, and He's the one that changes us from glory to glory. He's the one that gives us liberty according to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And what the Spirit of God does is where the Lord is, there is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me, and there's an anointing that will break the chain. He has anointed me to preach the gospel unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The manifesto of Jesus Christ comes in Luke chapter 4, but he says to proclaim liberty, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Now pay close attention to the next words. I told you Satan will not want to open the gate, but listen to what Jesus Christ has done. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. He did it. He kicked the door open, humiliated Satan, and knocked his feet out and said, it's open. You don't have power. Hell and grave gives up those that know what the truth is. You need to understand that you have to know what Christ has done. The Bible says the opening of the prison, he held it as fast as he can. He knocked down Adam. He knocked down the best of us until Jesus came representing man. And he stood in the ring and knocked Satan house and took the key and opened the gate. And you and I are free. The gate is open. The gate is open. I say the gate is open. That it's for us to go out or ignorance to stay in. Look at what Jesus says in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach, that is important, the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of jubilee the jubilee simply means once in seven years but here is a perpetual ever since jesus paid the price and what happened was matthew chapter 27 and verse 51 says even as he was giving up his spirit the curtain was broken from up to down i want you to understand what he has done is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 says that he took our curse being made curse for us that we would not be cursed. I want to read what it says in the book of Ephesians. And I want you to understand as you read from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Listen to what he says. In verse 12, that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the common covenants of God having no hope and without God in this world but now after what Jesus Christ did Jesus but now in Christ Jesus you who are sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus I am of the commonwealth of what I call the new Israel I am a seed of Abraham the Bible tells me all of Abraham's blessings is mine I must not be ignorant of all the blessings that God has given and it finds it fulfilled in me in Jesus Christ. Don't give it away thinking it's for someone exclusively. If you're in Christ, you are seed and you need to understand it's yours. And if you are set free, you are free indeed. Verse 14, he is our peace who had made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, between us and God, between us and God. Our brothers, be it of a different nation, a different culture, a different color, a difference, uh, difference in whether it be home or homeless, educated or uneducated, whether it's Romans or Jews or Greek, all are one together because he's broken down that partition. Satan puts that separation. Satan puts that partition. Listen to what it says. Having abolished, in verse 15, in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of the two one new man, so making peace. 
that he might reconcile both unto God, one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to them that were near. For through him we both have access by the Spirit unto the Father. Listen to what it says in 19. Now therefore you are no more, you shouldn't be like a stranger. You are no more stranger or foreigners. But listen, but you are fellow citizens, fellow citizens of the saints and of the household of God. I want to read Colossians chapter 2. And when I read, I want you to grasp what the Bible says from verse 14. It says, or in verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened the very moment your spirit was quickened, having been forgiven all trespasses, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, are he quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, blotting out, blotting out, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that stood against you, which is contrary to us, and took it by the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled, the principality have spoiled you, Jesus spoiled them. Listen to what he says, as the powers completely humiliated you, he made a show of them, humiliating them, triumphing over them for you. And the Bible says, let no man therefore judge you. That's the freedom you have in the type of you do eat or the type of drink you drink or in respect of a holiday or a new moon and the Sabbath. They're all shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. The fulfillment is in Jesus Christ. What a freedom. Don't let someone come and measure your hair. Or think in terms of how red is your lipstick or how green is your lipstick. Florence, I like that hair, pink and green. God be praised. You don't like it, don't wear it. It's her prerogative. What is so important, my friend, it's a liberty more than hair and more than lipstick. It's a liberty that I can have access to the Father and say, Abba, Father. There's a ransom. Boko Haram says they want, and the enemy of our soul wants ransom like ISIS wants. Let me remind you, in the spiritual world, Satan, they're all counterparts going all the way to Satan, wanting ransom of slavery. But I want you to understand, Jesus paid the price to the full. When you read the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8, it tells us he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity, for our chastisement, for our peace he bore our chastisement, and by his stripes you are healed. Listen to what it says in verse 8. He says, he carried the transgression for us all. That is, Jesus paid the transgression. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 8, for you, for me, the transgression of our people was he stricken. You don't have to be stricken. He paid the price to the full. <laughs> Let me remind you, my friends, the awesomeness of what Jesus Christ has done. When you think in terms of the amazing aspect of what Christ has done, it's amazing. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17 says, he himself, as the prophet Isaiah said, he took our sin and our infirmities and bore our sickness. Have you been infirmed because of your soul and spirit and body? I want you to know he took it. It took it means come, let me take it from you. And he nailed it to the cross. Have you been infirmed in your spirit life, in your soul life, in your body life, in your finance life, in the generation curse? He took it all and nailed it to the cross, hand it over to him, and don't take it on your shoulder. It is too big for you. There's someone who shouldered it on the cross to set you free from that worry and from that pain and from all of the things that the enemy wanted to do. He's played a number on you. It's not yours. Give it back to him in Jesus' name. When you go through the scriptures, you're finding out an amazing aspect of what he has done. Listen to what it says in Luke chapter 13 and verse 16, talking about a daughter of Abraham. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Look, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on this Sabbath day. And I say to you on this Lord's day, 
You have been bound by Satan 18 years, 20 years, 25 years. You have been holding on to something that has ruined you, hurt you, depressed you, oppressed you, possessed you. It can be in your spirit. It can be in your soul. It can be in an emotion. It can be in your life where you've been holding on to a bottle that's like controlling you. In Jesus' name, on this Sabbath day or on this Lord's day, the Lord wants to lose you from whatever he has bound you because ought not this woman, this child, this man, being a daughter, be free and be loosed, and Jesus is stepping in into your heart, even in this place, and whoever is watching, even into your life, because that is what Jesus has done. Give the Lord a clap offering. Let me also say something very important. What else? How then can I be released? How could I be released from this? Again, I refer to you to Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 18. Listen to what it says. Preach the year of Jubilee and says the loosing of the prison doors. Preaching liberty is very important. Get to hear this. Get to hear this in your spirit, into your soul, into your heart, and into your very mind. Let it sink right in that you are free and you are free indeed. Remind you, this is so important. When you turn to Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 7, what Jesus has done is incredible. In this passage, here is what Isaiah says. He's come to open the blind eyes. Why? Because as long as you are blind in the spirit, soul, and body, you are not knowing who you are in God and what your dignity and your authority is. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of prison. Have you been one of the prisoners in prison that sit in darkness and in the prison of the house? Worry and fear about your life and your future. Worrying and fretting that you're saying, I cannot, or the fear, or the feeling of depression, or the feeling of oppression, or the feeling that I'm going to be literally poor in the doghouse. All of this is what the enemy has put into you, and you're taking it what you shouldn't. You're handling what you shouldn't. You're carrying it what you shouldn't. And I say to you, Jesus has come to open the blind eyes. He's come to bring out prisoners, bring them out from the prison, and them that sit in the darkness in the prison house, he says, get up and go. What I mean is, the door is opened. Sadly, if you were to listen to the history of people that have been enslaved for many years, prisoners of war, and even when rescuers came out, the elite group, and even those that of the army rangers came to rescue them, they tell you these prisoners refuse to come. They're sitting there shuddering. They're afraid. They don't want to go. Literally, those that are in prison, I heard the story of a man that was wrongfully put in prison, and they framed him again and put him in prison. Ultimately, he was uh, finally found innocent, and he was set to go. That very day, as he set out of the doors of the prison, he was so scared to face a free world as a liberated man. Right in front of the guard, he threw a stone at the very guard and the bulb that was above him, and he went back to prison. When he was asked why, he said, I'm afraid to be free. I like the prison. It's time for us to know that is not for us. Get out and be liberated in your mind. Get out of the village mentality. Get out of the slavish mentality. Get out of this inferiority complex. Get out that you are a bound to slave because of what you did in 1992. It's time you need to know that the prison doors open. You may be saying, but you don't understand, Pastor. Mine is not a small sin. This is a mighty thing. It's not just the little demons running around here. It is powerful, powerful principalities. Really? Turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 49. And as you turn to this, listen to what it says in verse 25. Isaiah 49 and verse 25. For thus saith the Lord... Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. And I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your children. 
There's no reason why you should fear your family should be perished. There's no understanding why you should fear that you will be jobless. There's no reason why you think you can't be able to do better and better and better. There's no reason you feel I was on the other side. You should be on the right side and you should be on the penthouse. That simply means repent and you are in the penthouse. What I mean, my friend, is we need to understand the intent. You simply cannot throw a white flag and say, please, devil, please, please, will you? Can I just get up and just little freedom, a little freedom? Can I just have a day without the bottle? Can I have a day without fear? Can I have a day without depression? Can I have a day without being slavish to this terrible sin? And suddenly, sit down! Yes, sir, yes, sir. Please, if, sit down! Yes, sir. How long are you going to sit down and take it? There comes a time deep within your spirit, you say, enough is enough. I took all this nonsense. I'm not going to take it anymore. It's time, instead of asking like a wind, can I please help me? I'm a nobody. It's a false humility. It's time that you stand up. Jesus spoke this word in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Listen to what he says. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You need to be so righteously angered that you say, enough! You've been screaming at me. Let me tell you, Satan, in Jesus' name, sit down! Get out! It's time you tell the drug, out you go. I am not going to allow you to dominate me. It's time you tell the cigarette and you tell time. It's time you tell the little bottle and whatever it is, even the fear and the worry, I put you under. You are under my power in Jesus' name. I'm not under your power anymore. Enough is enough. And the violence take it by force. No more. Master, can you let me just go? Forget about asking permission. Jesus has set you free. The doors open and said, you stand aside. You stand aside. I'm going in Jesus' name. And I find that liberty and I find that freedom. You know, Lazarus was dead four days. He was in the sepulcher. Jesus came in, and he said, Lazarus, come out. But he needed to be untied. That is not what Satan did. That is what man did to him. And when you see man tying up someone, man has to untie him. Jesus has done what only Jesus can do. Once he was untied of the rope and of the white clothes, Jesus said, now walk out of your own volition. The door is open. The dead is there for the sepulcher. The living should not be there in that sepulcher. Walk out. There's a man for so many years, he sat in the gate beautiful, looking for arms. He thought that is the best. So many have a paltry expectation. You think your God is fugal and stingy. You think your God is giving you a handout. That's what Satan is, not God. He gives you more and plenty more. He has pocket full of miracles for you because you are his child. Don't get into a slavish mentality. And this man looked at Peter and John around the time of prayer looking for some pity pennies. And he looked up and Paul Peter said, silver and gold have I none, I have something better for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hey, he's been down there for 38 years. He never knew what to stand up. So he needed a little helping. And Peter took him up by his hand. But that man didn't just rise up and walk. He started leaping and jumping and praising God because all he needed was uh, lifting up and the rest of him came because deep in his heart, he said, I can't take it anymore. There was a dream, a dream that he thought was an empty dream and it died within him. But the moment he heard the word of God, the truth pierced into his ears. The 
through tears and opened his eyes. And the moment he realized him walking, him leaping, him shouting and praising God, he did that. You have dreams and it has died and it has been a terrible tragedy. I want to know when you hear the preaching of the word of God, even as I proclaim liberty, you're going to say, this is a dream that has come back. I am who I am and God has done what only God can do in Jesus' name. I say to you, an important aspect of this is, then what should I do? Yes, I should know the truth. I should know that Jesus has opened the door and I should be able to walk out of my own free will and volition. I want you to know, hear the word of God. Knowledge is freedom. Ignorance is captivity. But there's something we need to know. We need to seek the Lord with all our heart. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 to 8, tells us, my ways are not your ways. He said, seek the Lord while he can be found. And he goes on to say, let the wicked forsake their wicked ways. And then he says, God will have mercy. For my thought is not your thought, my ways is not your way. You thought God wants to punish me. He's going to, I have to pay for the, what I did in 2010. God has paid the price for you. You need to know that he's forgiven you. Listen, a great man like David went into sin, and yet in Psalm 51, he said, Lord, I acknowledge my sin. My sin is ever before me. Lord, have mercy. The bones which has been broken, restore it. Psalm 32 and verse 5, Lord, I acknowledge my sin. Unto you, mine iniquity have I not did. I said, I will confess my transgression unto you. You forgive my sin. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter, 60, chapter 65 and verse uh, 65 and verse 6. When you think in terms of what God says, revive that I may be refreshed. Psalm 126 and verse 1 says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then said they among themselves, the Lord has done great things for them. And then I said, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof I am glad. Turn again our captivity of the Lord as the streams in the south. This is what God is going to do. He's going to turn the captivity and turn it around and round and round that he can set you free. Listen to me, the years that have been lost, which the canker worms and the palmer worms and all these worms have destroyed, God is able to restore. Repent and come to the Lord and know that God's grace is with you today. I say what God has done is incredible, isn't it? It is something amazing when you think in what he has done. What do I need to do? Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, God is saying, Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come, I want to help you. Bring it all on the table, and I will show you how that has been prayed in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a clap offering. 1 John 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and he is just. It is the devil that wants to damn us. It is God that wants to save us. Give the Lord a clap offering. So I say to you, an important aspect that we need to know is we need to know that God has anointed us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You can't do it by yourself. You need the Spirit of God. You know, when you turn to Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, it says the Spirit, the anointing, shall break the yoke that is on you because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. I don't care what is the yoke that the enemy has put. It could be 20 years. It could be 15 years. You say, it's bad luck. It's misfortune. It is cursed. Then let's get it broken in Jesus' name. Break it. Break it. There's nothing that is impossible for the Lord. The Lord can do great things. You don't need to go back saying, I'm cursed. Say that I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Because God took the curse and put it on Calvary's cross. And God has put the blessing that is of the Son, Jesus, to you. There's a transference that takes place. You don't need to take the dumb that the enemy has put onto you. Take it to the cross and in its place, take the blessing. 
every time we take the communion remember what the bible calls it this is the cup of blessing jesus drank the cup of curse for you and for me i want to say this my friend what an amazing aspect of what god has done it simply means that he is doing a marvelous wonderful work i want you to know what we need to do is we must speak god's word many a times the reason we remain cursed is the enemy comes in and says you know what you'll never get a job and then we wake up and say lord i will not get a job lord you know what i'll never get a job i'm going to have sickness the devil says i've got cancer look i've got cancer look somewhere here is a cancer stop speaking what the enemy says and start speaking what god says his word is power when god says the gate is open the door is open no it's open don't say it's closed when god says you are healed you're healed when god says you are blessed you're blessed god says you're the salt you're the salt when god says you're a blessing you're a blessing don't say anything else because greater is he that is in you than that is against you god is on your side go ahead Look. Stand up and give the Lord a clap offering and say, Great is he that is in me, then that is against me. Give the Lord a clap offering. Take this, all that you have carried these many years. For you, it could be physical. For you, it could be solical. For you, it could be inferiority. For you, it could be in terms of infirmity of the flesh or the body or the spirit. For you, it could be a curse, a generation curse. Or you could have said oppression, depression, and everything of submission. Listen to me. Take it out and just throw it down. It doesn't belong to you. Throw it down. Throw it down. And now I want you to open your arms to receive the blessings of Abraham. The blessing of the Father. The blessing that God alone can give in Jesus' name. And say, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a clap offering. Go, oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory! Glory! I'm free! I'm free! I'm free! Let me also say to this to you, very important that you need to know that if the Lord set you free, you are free indeed. You ought to have a testimony. When you go through a difficulty, and when you go through a time of recession, think what God has done for you in the past and understand, speak the testimony. God is faithful. And I want you to know, plead the blood. You will overcome the enemy. Listen to what it says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. They overcome Satan by the blood and by the word of their testimony. Give the Lord a clap offering. Finally, the last two words as you sit down. Number four. Now that you are free, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, stand therefore, stand therefore in the liberty that is in Christ. Satan will try to measure you and say, you are a puny little fellow. You are so thin. You are spiritually not strong. You see, my friend, if the military officer, if the police officer, if those that come against the forces of darkness uh, in the world, let me remind you, you could be thin as stick, but it is not his thickness or his strength that frightens the enemy. Behind him and before him and around him are the arms of the United States that will defend him. I want you to understand this. Stand therefore with the liberty that Christ has given you. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13 and 14. Stand and having done, stand. I don't know what the enemy has done to carve you down, break you down, that you have so much even lost your voice, your spiritual voice. Stand up now and say, thank you, Father. Go ahead, stand up. And stand up eye to eye, face to face. And even if the enemy comes looking at you, say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Whom the Son set free, free. is free. Indeed.
Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We are free to worship our Father. Amen. We are free to come before his throne of grace. We are free to worship him this morning with the tithes and with the offering. Amen. And let me remind all of you that you can still text your offering now to Highland. Uh, you can 73256. Highland giving one word. Highland giving. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. For the freedom that we have in you because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, God, that we are able to gather before you this morning, God. And we are able to lift our voices unto you in thanksgiving, Father. And our Lord God, we extend our hands to worship you with the tithes and with the offering, Lord. Bless your people, O Father. Hallelujah, God. Multiply this, O God. Use it for your glory. And let it rebound unto us a hundredfold. We thank you, Father, for it has come from you. And it returns to you, O God. May your name be glorified. Through Christ our Lord and God's people say amen and amen. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. Hallelujah.
struggles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Y'all believe that? Come on, let's do that. No more shackles. Everybody say no more. No, no more shackles, no more I'm chains. I'm throwing it off. No more bondage. I am free. I'm throwing it off. Yeah. Come on, I'm throwing it off. Every weight that so easily beset me. No more shackles. No more shackles. Just a congregation. Let me hear y'all. Everybody say, no more shackles. Uh -huh. Whatever thing is bonding you, whatever thing, come on, come on, say it again. Let me hear y'all. No music. No more shackles. No more. Come on, one more time, everybody. Come on, say no more. No more shackles, no more chains. Come on, here we no go. More bondage, I am free. Y'all ready? Yeah. Here we go. Dance the dance of victory. Hallelujah. 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 is coming to worship the Lord and as they come to take their place please remember July the 16th is uh, Sunday the African ministry will be meeting please also remember July the 20th uh, it's a 29th is a Saturday we'll be going to this theme place down in Connecticut the Holiday Hill also members and those who want to I just take two minutes of your time want to talk something very urgent one is official and one is very personal and if you can just sit down right there, it'll be over in five minutes after the service. Hallelujah. Are you free today? Are you victorious? Are you an overcomer? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Free indeed. I don't know about you, but it sure feels good to be free. Free to love. Free to forgive. So you can move on in your walk with God. Amen. Amen. I love something that Minister Emanuela's husband said. Fear don't live here. Fear don't live here. Why? Because I'm free indeed. And I got the victory. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. 
a conqueror. I got victory, yes. victory, victory in his name, victory in the name of the Lord. I got victory, victory. Hallelujah. I feel the victory. Yes, yes. Glory, I feel glory. God's victory. victory. 
We are victorious in you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. V I C. V I C. I said V I C T O R Y. O R Y. Yes, V I C T O R Y. 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 It's your turn now. Hey. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, victory. 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 Go ahead. Yes. Oh, victory. I thought I saw Johnny Zingotito. Uh, come over here, sir. Just want to interrupt you. He's been with us for 25 years. He's the manager of our building, is retired, and he is going to Florida. Oh, there he is, and we want to wish him all the best. And, and this Friday, he spoke about how God has been there for him and been there. We're going to truly uh, miss him. Is uh, Norma there, sir? Is Norma with you? Okay. Can you stand as we bid him farewell? God be with you till we meet again. Need his wings securely guide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. We're going to miss you, Johnny. God be the glory. Amen. Let's remain standing. Lift your hand before God. That of God, our Father, 
the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the communion, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us from now and nevermore. Go in God's liberty. <laughs>